Hello friends. In this video, we're gonna go over all of the components of my charging system that I just installed um, in relation to the lithium battery conversion of Tritea. All right, let's jump right into it and get behind the chart table panel and see what it's all about. So here's my panel. And uh, a lot of what we're gonna look at is behind here. So here we go. I have three solar panels on my system. I have two 200 watt Renogy solar panels that are rigid that are on the rails. And then I have a small 50 watt panel that is on the hatch turtle. And each of them have their own dedicated MPPT controllers from Victron. So you can see the labeled port, starboard and turtle. Now for my little 50 watt solar panel that's on my hatch turtle, um, that MPP controller is wired directly to the starter battery and it acts as a trickle charger for the starter battery. And a lot of people are like, well, you don't need to worry about it. You know, you just start your engine every couple days. Okay, that, that's true and maybe it wouldn't drain, but for me on a boat, the starter battery is one of the most important batteries on the whole system. Like that's the one I for sure want to work. In the middle of the night, you're in a blow, you're dragging anchor, you got a lee shore. I wanna know that that battery is topped up all the time. So it, it may have been like uh, an extra measure, but um, I'm, I'm more than happy to dedicate that small 50 watt panel just to that purpose so that I'm certain that my starter battery is always gonna be topped up. That's how I went about it. <clears throat> you might be wondering why I went with individual MPPT controllers instead of a larger one. Uh, a couple reasons to do that. For one, if there's ever a sh like shading or like a shadow on one of the panels, it's not going to, you're not gonna get as an efficient of a charge if both of the panels are going into one controller, if part of it's shaded. Um, you get better efficiency with individual controllers. <clears throat> Another aspect is that I have a built-in redundancy. So if one of those fails, I can hook up the other panels to that and it might not get the full juice because these aren't i don't know what i don't think these are rated for 400 but the reality is is if you have one charge controller running all your solar array and it fails you have nothing so at least i have have it split up and um i have a double sort of redundancy on that and the same thing goes for the the little trickle charge on the the starter battery <clears throat> that we can always i can always easily reroute that to charge my lithium and remove it from the AGM. And that was the key is like, since my starter battery is AGM and my house bank is lithium, you can't mix the two. You don't want them to talk to each other. So that's why um, I have the, the, it's separated out so that there's one little panel for the AGM and then the larger solar array goes to the house bank. <clears throat> and while we're on that conversation, talking about the AGM versus lithium, let's talk about the DC to DC charger. So there's my unit, the Orion TR Smart uh, DC to DC charger. And what that does is it allows the alternator to charge both the AGM and the lithium. If you don't have one of these, you can, lithium will, has a tendency to, if you just hooked it straight up to lithium, it can burn out your alternator because the lithium will just keep taking as much as it can and you can overheat and blow out your alternator. So this unit, uh, this guy, is um prevents that from hap happening so it goes in it charges your starter battery and then once that's topped up anything left over goes through this unit and safely charges your lithium <clears throat> while protecting both your lithium batteries and protecting your alternator i don't have a small smart alternator yet um just don't i can't afford it at the moment so i just have my stock Yanmar, whatever stock alternator comes with the Yanmar. I'm not even sure what it is. Uh, so that's the um, DC to DC. Um, they, they're also called like B2B, like battery to battery. Um, so that's pretty, that's pretty amazing and I'm excited about that aspect. One other thing about my solar setup is I have individual shutoff switches for every one of the MPPTs. So if I go to work on my battery and I turn off my main master switch off, I also can shut off all the power to the solar coming from the solar panels. Because as, as long as there's sun on those panels, they're creating energy. 
So you need that shutoff switch from the panel to the um, MPPTs uh, for safety and so that your system isn't hot once you're running it. So I think this sums up everything that's happening behind this panel. Let's go down below the chart table and look at the rest of the setup. So this is one of the tight little spots I was telling you about. It's under the chart table. It is very, very small area to work in. So I'll do my best at filming what is down here. And I have a little light going, so that should help us. This unit is called the Lynx Distributor, and it's from Victron. Here's the cover, so you know what it looks like. And it's basically a big, fancy, expensive bus bar. Um, you have individual fuses for everything that you're plugging into it. And it basically just like powers your whole system uh, with the added benefit of being a like a, a fuse bar and a bus bar uh, i really like it it was very expensive but if you added up the cost of buying all of the mega fuse holders and all the connections and everything you you actually save money buying this if you're going with quality parts across the whole thing so over here we have my solar coming down and they join at that juncture box there <clears throat> and then go in to their spot with the fuse. I have a, a 100 amp mega fuse on that for the solar. Um, this one says RIN. This is gonna be my Renogy 3000 watt inverter that's gonna be dedicated for the electric galley. So that's coming in a later video. Here's our B2B that we just looked at. This big four aught cable goes to our Victron inverter charger, the MultiPlus 2000 VA. And that is the inverter for the entire house system, all the house plugs and whatnot. Um, this is our shunt for our battery monitor. And uh, this is a little copper bridge that I bought from Explorist's website. Uh, he has a really good YouTube channel for van life stuff, showing how to do a lot of this, a lot of these, these projects. And he sells a bunch of stuff on his website and he makes these custom bridges specifically for this application. And I really, really stoked that I bought it. I like it a lot. So that's the setup down underneath the chart table. The next project is going to be installing the Renogy 3000 watt inverter here. And that's going to be for, that's going to power the whole galley and everything. So the reason I went ahead and have two inverters on board, uh, one the 2000 watt Victron and then the 3000 watt Renogy is so that I can have the Renogy dedicated just for the electronic galley or the electric galley. And um, then I have a separate inverter just for the house system so that there's a, a nice built-in redundancy. So if something happened and if my ver inverter blew out and all my cooking ability is just through, you know, relying on that inverter, then I'm pretty much hosed. So when, and we'll talk about the other redundancies I'll have when I get into the galley video, but um, that's the reason I have two different monster sort of inverters on board um, just so that we have a built-in redundancy there. Now someone asked me online why I had my solar hooked up directly to that Lynx bus bar and uh, the reason I did that the person was saying that I hooked it up wrong and I needed to add like a, a breaker switch there and all this stuff so I have switches for every all the solar um, but the reason it's wired up that way, because he was saying it needs to go directly to the lithium batteries. The reason I have it wired up that way is because if I'm in the middle of the ocean and I have critical battery failure, it's already set up so that I can run all of my, charge all of my stuff, run everything in the daytime, just off of the solar independent of the batteries, whether they exist or not. So that that's the whole reason I set the system up that way. There's fuses all along the, the whole way. I can shut all the power off to the solar. So a lot of times people think that the way they would do it is the only right way. Well, there's there's many ways that you can do it correctly. So that's why I set it up that way. It's from experience at sea and knowing that I don't want to try to be rewiring a bunch of stuff in a rolling and pitching boat. And that way I know for sure if the sun's up, I can charge all of my devices in the daytime and uh, it takes one less stress off of me when I put out to sea. Another nice thing I installed was this remote for the Victron MultiPlus 2000. 
uh, it's cool. It has like a switch so you can make it so it's just the battery charger only or you can have it turned on so it's the inverter and the charger. It has a relay so that when you plug into shore power it automatically switches to shore power and um, it has this knob to adjust the current coming in for it. So if you have a generator and I'm really happy that I went ahead and picked that up. It's nice to have a good easy access to see if the inverter is on and to switch it on or off. Uh, it's also, I installed like a new plug in the galley. So now I have all my AC plugs hooked up to the inverter. They're also hooked up to shore power. And I'm very happy with how everything turned out. The uh, lithium battery conversion is done. It's all, all done and buttoned up. I have made a illustrated um, wiring diagram for everybody to take a look at and if you want to use it to kind of base uh, as a jump off point for your system or just to see how I went about it. I did a lot of research. I talked to a lot of experts and this is the final diagram for Tritea's charging system, DC charging system. And the uh, I put all the wire gauge sizes on there and the fuse sizes I've used and everything like that. So if you have any questions, hit me up down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, I hope this video helps you understand a pretty complex system. And I am very happy that this project is done and really pleased with how everything turned out. And thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Fair winds until next time.